Hey, this is Jeremy and welcome back to Blender for Designers. Today we'll be making a box with die lines. And by that, I don't just mean we're making the box in Blender, but also the die lines. And this includes flaps and everything. Let me show you. So here's what we'll be creating. It is, as I said, a box. And here's where we have it here. We have a box here on the right and the die lines here on the left. And let me show you this box for a sec. As you can see, it is a, f a full box with flaps. You know, it's got a nice little top flap here with a nice so render that nice little details there. It's got a side tuck tucking thing in there. And, you know, it goes all the way around. And, you know, if I hit Z, you can see that it's actually, it's you can see that there are flaps in there as well. So if we did it as transparent, which I might, um, we can, you know, get those flaps. And now I mentioned the die lines too. So, um, let me uh, show you that. This is the die lines. And now some of you may be saying, those aren't die lines, that's a UV unwrapping. But, and then some other people may be saying, oh, they look like die lines, but what are those lines in the middle? Well, I'll explain. It is a UV unwrapping and a die line. And in fact, it was generated by Blender by simple UV unwrapping. So I will show you how to do that with this technique I've developed. So it's, uh, it's very nice. And just one quick thing before we get started. This has been bought to you or not been bought to you by Mockup 3D because that's what I've been spending all my time on. We're launching soon. More on that at the end of this video. Let's go ahead and start on the die lines. In fact, let me show you what a die line is. A die line is where you take a box and unfold it. Or actually, what they do is they print like this. And while well, they print on a big sheet of paper, they cut it out and then it folds into a box. So this is this is an example, actually like something I worked on, a die line that I worked on. And if you you know, if you're curious about that, just grab a box that you have lying around and you know and rip it open and you know before you throw it out, it's probably a good idea anyway to keep it compact. Or before you recycle it, recycle it please. And uh, yeah, you can kind of figure out how a box folds in. And actually, hold on, I got an animation of that. Let me uh, play that. Okay, that's how a box folds. But let's go ahead and get started on this die line. All right, let's start with a whole new instance of Blender. So, boom, here we go. And now my Blender is probably a little bit different than yours because I've set my default slightly differently, but I've changed a few things. So for example, we start on Cycles Render. You should start on Cycles Render. You should probably always start on Cycles Render. It's silly they don't, you know, that they have it on Blender internal. The other thing they have is a default cube and a default light. We do not have, I do not have either of them now. We don't need the default light, but the default cube's not a bad thing. So I'm just gonna add a cube here. So I go Shift A to add, and then Mesh Cube. And that's actually gonna be our box. So let's rename it as box. And then the timeline we don't need because they're not doing any animation. So we just grab the little grippy strip and move that there. And then boom, we can go right into the cube, which should be two by two by two. If I hit N, we should see two by two by two. Good. Well, now I don't know what size box we want, so let's just do it by eye. Let's uh, let's make a tallish box because the other one is kind of squat. So I'm gonna go scale in Y. That's the g Y is back and forth the green. So S Y. So we're gonna scale in Y a little bit because most boxes are relatively thin. And then I think I'll scale in Z to just make this go a little bit higher. Uh, it seems like a that seems like a good box. It's kind of a cereal box shape or whatever. And um, and then of course what we have to do is now we have kind of changed the scale here. So what you have to do is control A to apply the scale. So we have a box that's this actual size rather than a box that's been scaled. It's kind of a weird thing to get your head around. But anyway, just apply scale whenever you're modeling. Um, and then of course you can enter actual dimensions. Um, I'm just using blender units because it doesn't freaking matter. But um, you know, for example, you can go into here and change it to, I don't know, in, you know, to inches or, you know, whatever, kilometers. Um, I honestly just keep it the way it is because I just want to do it visually and have the proportions correct. Um, it does not matter unless you're going to do uh, physics simulations. Uh, for light, the way Blender handles it, it doesn't matter. It could I conceivably matter if Blender took into account the wavelength of light, but it doesn't. So, you know, don't worry about it. So, again, if you're just rendering, it doesn't matter. So, okay, so what are we gonna do with this box? So it's just, um, it's just a, you know, it's just a bunch of geometry. Let's make some like tabs and stuff. So how we're gonna do that is I'm gonna take the top and the bottom off first. So we're gonna uh, hit tab to go into edit mode. And then I'm gonna do the face select tool and I'm gonna select the top and the bottom faces. So I just right, you know, right click and shift on both of them. And then I'm gonna delete them. So I'm gonna hit X, but I'm not gonna delete everything. I'm gonna delete only faces. Boom, so now you have a nice hollow thing there. Great, that's exactly what we want. And then we need a little seam here to put 
to make this, you know, an actual box. It's not, you know, something you can put on a flat sheet. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab the edge tool and cut this. We're not going to actually mark seam. We're going to really cut this. So how you do that is you hit the V key, and then you can see we doodle it around. But if you're like this and you don't want it to be there, you just hit the right key, right mouse button key. The right mouse button key, and it goes right back. Great. Okay, so now let's pull this back a little bit because we're going to make a little tab out of it. And then I'm going to extrude again. Or not again, but I'm going to extrude. Hit E to extrude, and we can again go in any direction, but we hit the right bu mouse button, and it doesn't go anywhere. So you want to... So we want to, you know, move in the x direction, which is that, which is the red. So G X, or we could use the red hour too, and then we're going to scale Y. Just, to, oops, sorry, I mean scale Z to make a nice little tab out of that. And if we want to move that back and forth and kind of figure out exactly. We'll figure out how exactly how far that's going to be once we figure it, once we give this thing some depth. But uh, if we want to move that around, we can actually go back to the face select tool and we can move this back and forth in Y in the green one. So that'll give you an idea. But let's go back to the edge selecting tool. And I'm going to edge take these four edges and we're going to make the tabs. So what we're going to do is we're going to extrude again and then it goes out of nowhere. And now what we're going to do is super easy to remember because it's scale X, scale Y, scale Z. So let's do it. Scale X moves the tabs in. Scale Y makes them tabby. And scale Z gets them further into the box. So there we go. Those are the side tabs that you, you'll see on the box. All right, now we got to do the top and the bottom. So let's grab the top edges and the bottom edges. And then we're just going to do this straight in and just scale scale y. Oops. So extrude first. I forgot to extrude. Haha. <laughs> now we can go scale y. Let's overlap them a bit. And now, since the tabs are never quite straight, we're going to go should scale y out a bit. So the tabs are never quite straight, we're going to scale x. There we go. So you know, you see as how those tabs work. Now, of course, what usually happens is the front tab goes up a little bit, goes slightly over the back one um, in boxes. And it's the same thing, the front on the, uh, the bottom goes over. But actually, what we want to do is we want to raise the top and uh, raise the inside bottom. So we want to raise the front on the top, but we actually want to we don't want to raise the bottom, we want to raise the inside. So we don't want to raise the inside, which is here. We can go up like that, but, and then we want to raise the top, which is here. So we're going to grab both of those at once and then just scoot them up a little bit. We can always change how far we decide to raise it. And you can't see anything in the in the, on the bottom unless we hit uh, this little thing here, which is kind of, which I call x-ray vision. So we can see now it's basically fully constructed. We have tabs. We've got, we got a tab in the back there. We've got tabs on the sides. Uh, and then we got the flaps on the top and the bottom. And in fact, what we can go ahead and do is actually UV unwrap this right now. In fact, which will create our die lines. So literally, this is it. Um, we're, there's going to be more to it because I want you know I want to make sure we actually get a realistic box. But uh, so let's uh, let's let me isolate things here and let me also split the window so we can get a, a UV image editor. And this is where we're going to have our die lines. So it's it's actually super easy. We don't need to mark seams. We don't need to cut anything. We've already done the cutting. You just hit select all. Hit a or a to unselect. A to select. Hit U to unwrap unwrap. Boom. Die lines. That's it. That's literally it. Um, these actually happen to be right side up. Sometimes it rotates. Sometimes it doesn't. But, you know, these are basically, these are the die lines. The, you're, you're kind of kind of done at this point. I'm going to go over some more stuff. But um, just to make sure they're straight, you know, I know how to read a die line, so look straight to me. But just to make sure, let's, uh, let's put an image behind here. So we're actually going to create an image. Uh, it's 1024 by 24 is fine. We're going to call it color. Color 1024. And since you want it actually a color grid so we can see where things go, and you hit OK. And there you go. These actually will tell you where the things are going to go on here once we go into texture mode. There's a few things we have to do before that. One of them is to uh, add a material. So to do that, I'm going to go into the node editor. going to get rid of this by hitting N. And I'm going to let's just go create a new material. And then I actually don't need to connect anything. I just need to get this texture in here. So you do an image texture, and then you grab, 
you grab that texture that was right here. It's the only one existing, the color 1024. And then as long as you selected this, then you can go into texture and you can see how it wraps. And we can take a look at that compared to the UV image editor and see that, yeah, see, it's sort of wrapping right around D7 here, and, you know, or the sevens. And then the fives and sixes go right in the middle. And then, yeah, so yeah, that's, it's working exactly like a die line actually works, which is great. Which is great. I'm actually going to get rid of this because it looks a little distracting here. But, um, because we're going to do some more unwrap. Actually, I'll leave it. All right, so then what else? Are, okay, but let's, uh, let's add a bit of detail. I mean, the first thing I always say is that you never want, you know, let me go back into, let me go back, hit Z, and then Z again to go back into solid mode. And then um, just scoot that over a little bit. Because one of the things I say is these, you know, edges are too sharp. You know, you never have edges like this, especially when flaps bend over. So to, to make the edges not sharp, it's actually really simple. You just use a bevel modifier, and that bevels these. Now, that's way too much um, in both ways. It's very, it's too chunky, and it's too far. So we can adjust the width, and we can actually, you know, this is an actual measurement, so if you want to be careful about it, you can do that. Again, I'm just doing this visually. And I'm adding three notches here. Now, you notice it's still a little uh, notchy. So to get rid of that, we go up to here, where we can either hit this plus button or hit the T key, and then we can hit smooth shading to smooth that out. And then we can just, you know, adjust the bevel size to whatever we want. And it doesn't change, it does not change the UVs at all. By the way, I hit command space to bring that up. Um, all right, so before we thicken things out, what you do, by the way, the solidify modifier, I'm going to actually just change this a little bit and just give us a, give us a little tab here on the top, because, you know, why not? Uh, so we're going to go to the top here, and then, actually, let's full screen this, and then what we're going to do is we're going to add some loop cuts. First of all, I'm going to tab into edit mode and uh, go back into solid, solid, and then I'm actually going to edge size here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some loop cuts right here in the middle. So you, what you do is you, you hit Control R, and then it starts, you can kind of put them anywhere you want. And then to add a couple of them, we're going to add four. So you put, you scroll, you scroll the mouse wheel up to add more. So I hit right click to undo that, but let me do it. So hit command, uh, control R, one, two, three. So we want four, that's, that's enough. Okay, great. So now what we do is right, uh, right click to, you know, left click to accept, then right click to not move it anywhere. Because what we want to do now is we want to scale in X, the whole, the whole edge loop. Scale that in in X, and then we just want to take these two edge loops and scale them out in X. And then we want to bring this a bit forward. Oop, I'm sorry, not up. We want to bring that in Y, so with the green. So there you go, nice little tab, and we can, uh, we can move that to kind of wherever we want. Move that back a little bit. And then we can actually make the bottom, usually the bottom goes a little bit further. So now we actually need a whole, to select this as an edge loop. So to select an edge loop, you hold Option, Shift, right click. We can move that back a little bit. And then we can use X-ray vision to move this over a little bit. All right, so now we have a slightly more complicated die line. But if we go, into our UV image editor. I'm going to get rid of this and clean that up again. So we hit A, U, unwrap. And again, keeps the same die line just where it was. And now we see actually the bottoms are a little bit longer. And we've changed the size of the tops a little bit. And as, as one can do. All right, now let's, now we've, we've had a little, a few effects here. We could change it again, but let's thicken this up a bit. So the way to do that is to go back to our modifiers and use a solidify modifier. Boom, so we can see that already kind of added some thickness right here. And uh, we can change the thickness. It's probably pretty good, actually, the way we had it. Um, and again, it's an actual measurement. So if you have, you know, specs on how big your paperboard is, you could certainly do that, although... Honestly, like it doesn't matter. You should do it visually. All right. So one problem we noticed here when we put that on is we start to see all this black and weird stuff. That's called. Uh, those are due to normals. Uh, they're actually screwed up normals. I'm not going to go ahead and explain everything about normals here, but um, it's also basically because we're using smooth shading and we need smooth shading for these bevels to make them well smooth. But 
we can we don't need it for the top faces so we're going to fix that and we can do shading differently depending on the face so i'm going to zoom in here hit com control 7 or sorry numpad 7 to go to the top and then i'm going to hit tab to go into edit mode and then you actually want to go to the third tab down and this is where we can change faces or whatever so we want to be in the face select tool hit a to unselect everything and then hit b to just select these top faces and make them flat and then we're going to do the same thing control 7 for the bottom control 7 goes to the bottom and we're going to select these faces to tab back into edit mode uh, a to unselect everything b to select these faces and then flatten them out Cool. We don't actually don't need to do the sides and the back, especially since we're going to do some more beveling in just a minute. So good. So now we have some nice flat faces. Great. And then let's take, and then one of the other thing I actually speak of beveling, um, we noticed the bevel got a lot thinner. The reason it did that is because I'm going to tab into edit mode again. It's trying to bevel these edges too, and it's screwing things up. So what we can do is we can limit the bevel to only things on the outside. We can either, you know, there's a lot of ways you can limit them, but the best way for here is just to use angle. And then we can have as little or as much bevel as we want and keep it nice and adjusted. All right, great. So we got this lovely little box. Let's start to render it. Save first. And then, okay, so we're gonna go here into the UV, oh, sorry, the node editor. Um, and then let's just, uh, let's just get that nice and big. Uh, let's go to, excuse me, let's go to the uh, outside texture. And then instead of a diffuse, I'm going to go ahead and use a, uh, la, la, la. oh, sorry, on texture. going to go ahead and use a principled BDSF shader, which is, you know, kind of our uber shader. So we can play with like reflections and whatnot. Um, let's actually, yeah, let's just, just turn the roughness down. It makes it nice and smooth and maybe we'll play with the specular. Okay, cool. And then we're gonna go. Um, we're gonna go into the world and create an environment map so we can light this thing. Um, I'm gonna add a texture, image texture, or sorry, environment texture. Very important not to use an image texture. Hit open. I'm gonna go to my favorite environment texture, which is the one I used for Mockup 3D. These are just different versions I created. Um, and plug that right in there. And then so we hit Shift Space to see them both. And now let's get rid of the sidebar by hitting T and go to rendered mode. We can either do up here or shift Z. So if you see me do it quickly. And there we go. There we have it. It's a very shiny box. I wanted to use it pretty shiny so we could see kind of how the normals and how the highlights kind of shine off of there. We can change the shininess amount so we can go back to the material and just, you know, we can go back to the material here and we can just turn up the roughness a bit to make it a little bit less shiny. It's pretty good. You know, we could have a, it could be a coated paperboard. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of how you render it. And now let's, let me do another little trick in rendering. Um, I'm going to go back again to the environment texture and I'm going to combine this background with a white background. Um, I'm going to put a little mix shader, shader, shift A to add these, by the way, shift A shader, mix shader. So right now we're mixing 50% white and the background, which is very bright. But what we actually want to do is use a white, create a white background only. Uh, so how we do that is, you know, we want to say only, you know, we want white background if it's the camera's looking directly at it. Otherwise, we want to use this lighting. So how we do that is we add a, a uh, input uh, light path. And then we say is camera ray. So if it is the camera ray, and that's be one, it would go to white. If it isn't a camera ray, if it's just lighting the object, it would use this environment map. So this is what that looks like. So now we have like kind of a nice white void. I like white voids. They're cool. So yeah, let's just go ahead and save that. And we can see, you know, I actually turned the, uh, I actually had the inside box be a lot you know, uh, tanner so we can really see the inside there. You know, you may want to, for your own thing, tone it down. And then we also notice that this tab's a little bit high. So if I hit ZZ to go back here, I can actually just bring that down a bit by going to edit mode, and then we can select this as an edge loop. First of all, let's make sure nothing's selected. So I hit A, A, man, looks like I unselected at that point. So let's grab the edge tool, and then we can just figure out how high we want this, and we can just move that down just a little bit. 
So maybe not that much, but just so it's kind of resting on, you know, you want to see a three, a dimensionality there, but you don't want it to exaggerate. And we hit shift Z to go back into rendered mode, see what that looks like. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Um, sorry, once it renders, you'll actually be able to see that lovely little tab. And, you know, it depends on your lighting, just how much tab you want to see. But uh, let's go hit ZZ back into solid mode again. Or actually, you want to stay tabbed in and hit everything, because what I want to look at is the UV. Uh, and UVs, or specifically the dye lines, you know, which are basically the same thing. You know, these are dye lines. Um, you know, if you put something on here, that's going to be the top tab. If you put something in this, it's going to be an inner tab. It's going to put this at all the front. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's just go ahead and export the UVs. And I'm going to go ahead and put that, yeah, we'll call this, call this dye lines. And one thing we might want to do is have no fill opacity um, so we can actually treat these kind of as die lines and we can export it so we can go ahead and grab those die lines I just created can open that in Photoshop now I'm gonna go ahead and create some art here in Photoshop now if you wanted to you could take these die lines and import them into Illustrator as well you could even trace them with actual paths or you could just use it as kind of a layer on top, which I'm kind of doing in Photoshop. But yeah, I'm just gonna throw some art real quick on here. I'm not gonna, this isn't a Photoshop tutorial, so I'm not gonna go over it too much with you guys, but uh, here's some art. All right, so now I'll just get rid of the dye lines themselves and save the image as a transparent PNG. Then let's go back into the blenders. So let's go back to the node editor. Make sure we're on the material. Make sure we're on the right material. And then instead of this checkerboard pattern, what we can do is we can go ahead and use art. And then we can actually see what that looks like. Yes, and we actually see that there's black because uh, it's an alpha channel. There's It's clear. So what we can do is we can um, mix RGB here. And then we can mix the alpha channel. And let's actually go into Shift Z. See, this is rendered. Now they're the same exact color, so I always forget which one is which. Oh, okay. We can make this a make this a nice light gray, and then make the text itself kind of a dark gray. Or we could use the same color as the text if we really wanted to. The seller I selected so carefully in Photoshop. And there you have it. That's kind of how you wrap a die line. And I'm sure you could come up with more interesting art if you took longer than the five seconds I took. But yeah. All right. And now I just want to go ahead and show you another box I made to practice this tutorial. And in this one, um, I actually added a little bit more complex geometry. And so the UVs weren't quite as straight as the other ones. Uh, you can deal with this. It's not that difficult. Um, I kept the other box quite intentionally simple, but it's fairly simple to straighten them. You just have to select the points and then either scale and X, your scale X zero, scale Y zero to kind of straighten things out. And you can do that. Sometimes you can even select edge loops with, uh, you can select edge loops in a UV by holding, uh, same way you select edge loops on geometry, you just hold option, shift, and right click. But uh, yeah, that's kind of what I was doing here on a differently shaped box. And there you have it, a box with die lines. I'm gonna go ahead and show you a rendering I did. This is actually a different shape box, but it's done using the same technique. It's actually the one I did in the thumbnail. I'll put that up actually. You can see how the die lines match the box. And you can see I actually did a slightly different shape. But, uh, but going back to the rendering here, I actually wanna show you something I did with this. And for that, I'm going to plug Mockup 3D. This is the latest about of Mockup 3D. Um, and if we go down to boxes, you can see I actually put this box in Mockup 3D. So we can use it to create a scene. So we'll call this a demo box. And then you just give it a second, save. And there it is. It is a box. It is a different shape. And you can see we actually have this slightly different uh, little nook on there. And it's looking a little glossy, so I'm going to turn down that gloss just a little bit. And then this is metallic, so that's like super glossy. But uh, yeah, I'll just show you that we actually have, you can see there's a window box in here. You can actually see the little tabs and everything in there. If I cover that up, you wouldn't be able to see it. In fact, let's just take a look. 
So, you know, again, you can do just like you did with anything else in Mockup 3D. You can drag a logo right in there. You know, and then we can play with the size of that window. Yeah, we can have the logo overlap, why not? And there you can kind of see, you can see that it's a window box and you can see inside to all the little tabs that I constructed, just the same way I constructed the box that I just created. So there you have Mockup 3D. And if you're interested in Mockup 3D, we're actually launching pretty soon and we're going to go into beta quite soon. So if you're interested in being a beta tester, you'll get a free month and, you know, as long as you give me some feedback, uh, go ahead and tell me, uh, contact support at mockup3d.com or just message me directly through YouTube and I'll get you hooked up with a beta test. And finally, one more announcement. I'm going to be making some changes to this channel. I think I'm going to be adding another series. Not 100% on exactly how I'm going to do that yet, so stay tuned. Just uh, giving you guys a heads up there. And yeah, so exciting things happening. Mockup 3D is launching soon. Um, yeah, big things. And uh, hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and happy blendering and enjoy. Thank you.